You hear that, Lane? What? It's the winds of change. Mm, it's the winds of change. <laughs> Come on, Gar. We just just changed our name. That, that that's it. Yeah, well, it means a lot to me. Okay. I mean, it means a lot to me too. So, uh, shall we schwa the brand new roll call? Yeah, let's schwa that brand new roll call. A.G. Suvaraya, the man who created something from nothing. Godzilla. Ultraman. But when those who don't give his franchises enough credit, these podcasters will do it justice. For they are... Kaiju Sentai! Ultra Ranger! Love our Hall of Fame's Ultraman. Ultra Yellow Cancer, gone. The other son of Belial. Ultra Pinkcaster, late! Spreading the love on one of Japanese beloved franchises. Kaiju Sentai! Ultra Ranger! Shrek! Wow. Especially all the visuals. I didn't know that I was the other son of Belial. That's that's, that's that's pretty interesting. I know. It's like you came up with it in like five minutes. Hey! I'm thinking about that all week. I'm trying to... Anyways, welcome everybody to Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger. Episode 51. Yeah. Or is it episode one? I will just say it at 51. We'll keep it consistent. Yeah, we're going to keep the consistency here. So it's confuse, episode 51. So we don't confuse ourselves in the future. No, but we might confuse people in the future being like, where's episode one of Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger? All I found is Ultra Ranger. So, yeah, like, much of our show is not going to change. It's just, like, face kind, of, lift. kind of facelift, a bit New more visuals. better visuals, uh, done by uh, Bluecaster Ichi. Yep. So, thank uh, you, sir. A big round of applause goes to Mr. Bluecaster, Ashida Azil, and Dreamcaster, Global Soft Perka, for doing the artwork. Yep. It's cool how, for our designs of our, uh, like, Ultra Casters, mine has a more hasty look, while Gar's has a more show look. Show! Sure. It's like, he, he, he likes the old school Ultramans, and I like the new ones. Mm. So. <laughs> I like the old show ones. We got all our we got all our Ultraman vinyls displayed here. So I got my Belial G Dino and Victory, and then my '80s coming in soon. And I have my Taro Juggler Juggler Zavi Ultraman Zero Beyond or Origin and Royal Mega Master. It's funny the first time we talked about like Juggler's full name, Juggler's Juggler on Cast Ranger, we all left our asses off. We're like the Juggler, the Juggler, the Juggler wants to play too. The Juggler. <laughs> this is very funny. So, so, of course, since it's a rebranding, we got booze, because, oh, right. you know, it's not a milestone at Ultra Ranger unless we have fucking booze. You just wanted an opportunity to drink, didn't you? Yeah, well, I always like to have an opportunity to drink. Mmm. Oh. oh, even Ichi's celebrating. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I hope good we for got that. Good for him. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So we're we're very excited for this new rebranding of our show because we want to expand on it, you know, improve. Make more money. Well, make make any money. Make any money. That's our that's our motto. Kaiju Sentai Ultra <laughs> Ranger. Want to make any money? We got to make the money. The money. <laughs> no, no, no. Um. But today, uh, in this episode, we are talking about Ultraman Rube Episode Five. Goodbye, Icarus. And episode one of Ultraman X. X! Uh, 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 triple X. X. Starring Vin Diesel. <laughs> oh my god, just imagine Ultraman X voice by Vin Diesel. Daichi. You gotta... You gotta fight those kind of kaijus. But yes, we are also talking about Ultraman X, episode one, a voice from a starry sky. Starry sky. But uh, we got some new... We got some quick bit of news to talk about. A little bit of news. And uh, speaking of Ultraman X, uh, Ken, uh, Kensude Takahashi has announced that he is leaving his acting agency. Oh, just like Herb. Yep. Uh, just like with the actor who played Guy, Takahashi has announced that he has decided to cancel his contract with his agency. Uh, Takahashi has previously been known to play as Daichi Ozore, the character who transformed into the titular hero of Ultraman X. 
His blog will be closing soon, so he is altering ev oh, he is alerting everyone to follow him on Twitter. Cool. I'll follow him on Twitter. And we finally got some Ultraman Rube shirts. <gasps> There's the that, spaced out yeah, one. Yeah, the swirl shirt, and then well, it's well, it's spaced out. Oh yeah, spaced out, and then it's uh, And then we got the shirt that we saw in episode five. Yeah. The you know the tooth is out there. The tooth is out there, and I'm like, I like just was like, come on, dude. Yeah. Uh, so far, they're all Ushio's shirts. Oh, they, they, there's even a basic Quattro M shirt. Ooh. And we also have uh, Katsumi's and Isami's jackets. Oh, that's cool. Wonder if, I wonder if they'll release, like, the uh, design for, like, the baseball uniform that, like, his dad was just like... Oh, no, that's lame. Not, that's lame. <laughs> what, Daddy? Oh, what? Look at one of these stock photos in which it's a female wearing jacket that brings you know what that actually brings up a good idea what if Rosa and Blue all those siblings what if they're like brother and sister hmm that would've been cool yeah. I would've been happy with that uh so Katsumi's red jacket will go for 19,440 yen and Isami's blue parka will go for 14,040 yen both are scheduled for shipment in September 2018. And these, and both of these are screen accurate. Yep. I want that freaking Ultraman Rube shirt. Uh, each shirt runs for a small, so for a US it's extra small. Medium, which is a small. Large is a medium, and XL is a large. Okay. So I'd have to get an extra large shirt. Yeah, same. You know, large? You're large. Oh, right. Excellent. Sorry. Yeah. Backwards. Damn it, me. I'm a large. I get, I get, uh, space out shirt. Mm. I like that one. There's also a shirt that says, My Mother, Vibe School, which is the purple one, and the Quattro, yeah, the Quattro M shirt. <gasps> Bless me. I had them in Kuju. Which is the black one. Mm -hmm. And the last news story for this episode. Oh, God, no! Yeah. No, oh, I want to look, take my glasses off for this. I want to look at Leo and Astra. They're ugly. Yeah, it's Ultraman Leo and Astra. But it's also about Koichi Sakamoto. Mm -hmm. Yes, apparently Ultraman Leo was an inspiration for him when he was a child. Oh. Or how old he was when the show aired. <laughs> okay. Uh, the see. Which, there's a bit of a history of Ultraman Leo about how the series struggled for ratings and it was forced to adapt elements and hope to strengthen its ratings. Elements include the introduction of a new Ultra character. Ult uh, well, not Ultraman, Astra. Simply Astra. A massive cast ov overhaul later on during the show's run. The series later became a fan favorite thanks in large part to the rebroadcasting 1978. Wow. Koichi Sakamoto, who has directed various Power Rangers series, as well as shows like Ultraman Jeed, Kamen Rider Forze, and Juden Sentai Kyoryager, was inspired by Leo so much of the action seen in Ultra Fight Victory. Hmm. Uh, Sakamoto was Sakamoto was met with great cheers at the event after announcing he would like to make a new Ultraman Leo series. The cast joked about what sorts of things the series would have in that Gen Ontoya, or, or Tori, uh, would be infected fighter due to his old age. It's a fight against old age itself, joked Sakamoto. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. Huh. Oh, that's cool that he got inspiration from Ultraman to like do like work like this. Mm -hmm. Um so just quickly we also we talked about an extra cast ranger, but I just thought I'd bring this up just because it's kind of something Ultraman related. So sadly, uh Unsho Ishizuka uh passed away, so he was like the Japanese voice of Professor Rogue, Joseph oh. Joestar, Larry, and uh, Zuoger, but he also voiced uh, Beatstar in Ultraman Zero, the special we watched. Oh, yeah, a Battle for Beatstar. Yeah, that was he was Beatstar. Oh. So, 
Yeah, so very, he, very small role, but it, yeah, role. but uh, it was it's, it was very shocking and unfortunate because like he's done so much good voice work, and like he'll he'll be missed severely. I know I know I'll miss him a lot because I I love everything he did. Jojo. Yeah, he did jo- old Joseph Joe Star. He did Larry and Zooger. And no! yeah, he was Heihachi and Tekken. So yeah, he was Beat Star. So good job, Zero. You killed Beat Star. Well, that's it for news. Pretty short news week. Oh, we don't have 45 minutes to talk about for news. Yeah. Damn it. It's actually kind of good because we'll have a lot more to talk about with X. Because that's the first episode yeah, of the show. So, let's do Ultraman Room. Room! Yes, episode five. Goodbye, Icarus. So it seems this was sort of an Isami focused episode because it was kind of like about this girl that he knows in school, but like they they have a thing for each other. You can tell, like you can honestly fucking yeah. tell the chemistry that was going on between them. Yeah, there you, were sparks. You can kind of see what Isami like. Isami kind of had a thing for her, so he didn't really mention it, but he did. And she was like, okay. Well, well, they never fly out say it. It's just like... Well, because there was like a part where like she's like, she's like, oh, I like to build, like, when I build like flying machine, I'll build it for two. One for, like, build it for two uh, two seats. And then he was, she, he's like, I'd like you to come with me. He's like, I'd love that. Yeah. So I guess we should talk about this girl that he likes. Uh, her name is Yuya uh, Mi- Ninomiya. Ninomiya. Um, also, apparently, Sami's nickname for her is Icarus. Well, no, that's what everyone calls her. Right, everyone just calls her Icarus. Based off, like, the Greek uh, hero who built uh, a pair of wings out of wax and tried to fly towards the sun, and then... He... Melton felt his death. Yeah, felt his death. <laughs> but I did notice something, though. Uh, with the subs, her name is still Yuya, but is with two U's. But if you look at one of the tackle boxes in her lab, it's only spelt with one U. Hmm. So it's Yuya. Okay. Or it's Yuha. It's Yuha. A, it's a Yuya. Yuha! <laughs> yes. Yuha! In which she studies practical application of artificial muscles and exoskeletons. And she makes flying suits. Apparently that means she loves to fly. Yeah, she was like trying super hard to like be Navi from Gokaiger because that's what her suit... Well, excuse me, that's what her suit reminded me of. With the wings I could fly, wanna fly. <laughs> I won't go safely. You have to give me a hand. Oh, that, uh, that's, that's very really funny. That's a serious. Um. So yeah, like at uh, one point, uh, yeah. So like we get to learn more about her and stuff like that, and she's like she she's cute and like you know she's very dedicated to what she wants to do. So like I I respect her a lot for it, and she's she's a fun character. She's cool. But it was funny. Like there's a part where like Isami's like helping her out with something, and then like just like Katsumi and uh, Asahi Asahi come by, and I just pretend like Isami's just like, oh god, it's my brother and sister are here. What should I do? Just act natural. Just, just look away, pretend you don't see him. Hey! Nissan! Nissan! Uh, hey! hey. Oh, don't you love your brother? No. Uh, I despise him. I don't know why we share a twin size bed. I don't know why we're both Ultraman. What was that? Nothing? <laughs> just. Just accidentally just pulls it. Actually, that's a good question. Do Isami and Katsumi share a bedroom? No, I think they have separate bedrooms. Are you sure it's not like Step Brothers where they're both laying in the back of the stack each other? Let's <laughs> crush each other. The bunk beds were a very bad idea. Why did you let us do that? <laughs> um, and then the, they're at the they're back at the Quattro, and um, all of a sudden Eisen shows up. A shirt so bad, even I wouldn't buy it. Man, why didn't we get him to write our roll calls? Yeah, really. <laughs> Oh, and just, honestly, like, this man's growing on me. He's fucking awesome. He's getting crazier. Yeah, well, no, it's not he's getting crazier. He is crazy. 
He just hides it really well. Well, well, he's showing it more. So he walks in, and then he sees a jacket hanging up, and then he decides to want to buy that jacket for a shit ton of money. And what jacket is it, Gar? It's Kern Eye Guy's jacket. It's from literally Kern Eye Guy's jacket. Well, I guess you're right. I saw the prop. Wait. What do you call the prop? No, it's Guy's actual jacket. Yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's a prop. It's a costume. I wonder if Guy kept, like, the like Guy's actor kept the jacket. I like to think so. He probably got kept the or- orb because, well. I feel like if I worked on, like, a Tokusatsu show, I would at least want something. Oh, I would too. I would definitely just be like, I want to steal this. <laughs> what happens to the Quasar Sabers? The what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> just rel- re- re- reliving the plot of the show. Um. Yeah, so he like gives them like a check for like a shit ton of money. We don't see how much money. How many? Like probably like six orbs or more, I'd say. How, how many rupees? How many orbs are in that <laughs> uh, on that check? I have two hundred rupees. How much is that in American? Buck fifty. A buck ten. A buck ten. Um, yeah, and then like as like they're all like arguing over like oh should we actually like take the check or not like that he plants like. A cookie-shaped listening device in a plate of cookies. It's not a cookie. It's the self-destruct button to the TARDIS. <laughs> TARDIS, yeah. bang, bang, Daleks, boom. All right, fine. It's a Jamie Dodger. <laughs> it's really good. But that's why I actually have it in the notes. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah. Jamie Dodger. <laughs> it's a Jamie Dodger. Th- those are good cookies, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get Peak Freen's Jamie Dodgers. They're really good. Um... Yeah, so he plants a listing device because, like, obviously he knows that fucking Isami and Katsumi are Rube, Rosa and Blue, so... Evil. So we just, like, cut to him. He's just, like, on the rooftop of his building and just, like, with... Or some building. Like, no, I think it's on his building. Oh, remember, Eisentech has a giant skylight. Yeah. Oh, okay. But he's on a building and, like, he's sitting with a cup of tea and, like... And, like, he's just, just like, awesome. that's delicious! <laughs> He says in English. And like Darling, like, like Darling, who's this like little floating like drone robot, just like serves him his tea by like dropping like a tea bag into the cup, and I'm just like, this I, guy. I did like the interaction with Ushio, like their father, and uh, Makoto. Mm-hmm. He's like, because Makoto walks in and he and he tells uh, Ushio, he's like, "Wow, this place hasn't changed in 15 years," and Ushio's like, "Yeah." Kind of helps me to remember that if Mio was still here. And he's like, ah, Mio Minato. Ah, lovely woman. Ooh, that jacket. Yeah. Just guy's jacket. Like, that. that's... Mm. And, yeah, so he just starts listening in on, like, Katsumi and Isami just, like, talking. And I'm like, I'm like that's smart. It is like, smart. this is a villain that's just, like, knows who our heroes are. Who will use technology... To get to get to closer, gain, yeah, and gain information. Like that's fucking great. Because what did K and Juggler do? Mostly just hit around until they actually want to be seen. Yeah, really. But no, Eisen Eisen is a very smart villain. I gotta say. Yeah. Um. I. Hmm? Uh, before we continue, I at least do want to say the editing between the scene that starts after uh, the opening to like. To the scene with the Jammy Dodger. Mm-hmm. Or, not scene with Jammy Dodger, but... Uh, two more scenes later... As- Asahi picked up the Jammy Dodger. Trying to take a bite out of it. She thought it was just a joke and she tossed it into the garbage. Mm-hmm. So, that next five minutes or so... Yeah, roughly five minutes. It was all, like... It felt like everything was edited out of order. Yeah. Because it's like, one scene they're at the park help, uh, helping uh, Yuha. Uh, Yuha with the with the flight device. Mm-hmm. Then it's back at Quattro M. Then back at the park. Then back at Quattro M. It's like, why well, am I feeling all the park scenes should have happened at one time, and then all the Quattro M stuff was after. Yeah. And I even noticed, uh, Isami was also wearing different shirts. During the scenes when he was at the park. So it clearly means a couple of days go by in this episode. Yeah. 
Well, it probably just means he's been listening to them, to them for, like, a few days, so, I don't know. Like, that, that's the bad thing, like, we were get good with a sense of time for a while, for a few episodes, but now it's kind of just, like, how, how much yeah, time since, since episode three, this. It's the one thing with Star Wars that I always have a problem with, we have no sense of time, especially in episode three, because, like, Padme's pregnant, and then, how much fucking time goes by from when, like, they rescued Palpatine until the final confrontation of Mustafar? We don't fucking know. It could be nine months, could be a week. <laughs> like, we don't know. Um, well, now why don't we just ask George Lucas? No. Um, yeah, so then, like, she bites the, the fake cookie, and then, like, Eisen's like, oh, no, no. Yeah, like, cause apparently biting on the cookie equals high pitch sound. Well, yeah, that's like b- pitch of like someone biting into a v- biting into it. So, yeah, th- no, that would hurt. It's like, it's like, when, no, it's like in those movies when like someone has like a listening device and then they realize it's a listening device so they just go and like the person's listening and they step on it and it goes like Wee! and they're like ah! so th- like that's why. Can you bite any harder, Mikey? I can still hear us here. <laughs> ah! Um... So then, like, yeah, so, like, Isami, like, or Yuha asks Isami to, like, at one point to, like, be his assistant, or her assistant, and, like, I, I didn't he, notice when he broke, but... It was some sort of, like, hinge. Was maybe? he just, like, fiddling around with it and yeah, it broke? Oh. because he mentioned Ultraman, then, ching! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, shit. And she's like, by the way, that was $200. 200,000 yen. Yeah, 200,000 yen. Oh, no, that, oh, that's $2,000. For a hinge? They're college students. They can spend it on their OSAP. I guess so. Even though OSAP doesn't exist in any other place in the world. Right. Um, but yeah, so then, um... Quebesa. Oh, yeah, so, it's fucking hilarious. Like, Eisen, like, he just, like, summons him. He's just like, Un, deux, trois, brrr, un, deux, trois, brrr, un, deux, trois, brrr, brrr. It just summon, it summons him. So, yeah, this is, like, the same bird monster that was in Orb, but or, in Orb, he was Mega Basser. Yeah, so it's confirmed that the race is called Basser. Yeah, so this is a different Basser. You basser. You basser. <laughs> oh basser, basser, basser. Bart. Basser, 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 basser. Bart. Basser, 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 basser. <laughs> That's great. Um, so then, like, it, what's funny? Like, you saw me and Katsumi actually like think of a really good excuse. It's like, all right, we'll pick up all of your ju- your stuff. You uh, you take Asahi out of here and go, go, go. Okay. We'll, we'll clean up your shit. Yeah. And so then, yeah, this is, like, perfect opportunity. They transform into Rosso and Blue. Which, I kind of... We're five episodes in. I think at this point now we should just have, like, a side-by-side transformation sequence. Because it's practically the same thing. Yeah. I'd prefer that. Hell! I'm shocked that they haven't done that. Yeah. Hell, when Katsumi was changing a crystal, it kind of just, like, was, like... So that crit And then just, like, cut to him, just fully transformed, like, changed color. And I'm like... That was, like, abrupt. So, like, that was kind of lazy, I thought. It just kind of, like, cut cut out his sentence out while he was saying it, and then just, all of a sudden, oh, he's red now. Or, no, oh, he's blue now. So. I, I feel like now editing your audio to be, like, choppy. God damn it. No. Um, yeah, so then, like, so I was funny, and then, like, they summon a bunch of wind or whatever like that, and then, like, I guess the... Wind crystals like stuck in like the ground. So, so yeah, it got buried thirteen or thirteen hundred years ago. Okay. And which they predict it's the wind crystal because of all the high winds on the ground. Yeah, in that area. That makes sense. I don't know. Um. So they're fighting, and then like uh, Rosso and Blue think of the idea. It's like, oh, okay, let's like I'll shoot the ground with water, and then you use your fireball attack to like make it steamy so it, like, rises up out of the ground, and then they do it. And we get this awesome shot of just, like, the, the wind crystal, like, in the air, and then just, like, it's all cloudy and foggy, and then you just see, like, blue, like, come out of it. But for a second, I thought it was actually orb dark. Like, you see his hand, like, all you see is a hand come out, and then once you see the horns, like, oh, okay, it's ultra blue. Yeah, but at first I thought it was orb dark, and I was like, oh, shit, like, we're getting, like, a teaser of him. 
Um, and then, yeah, it's the Tiga Crystal, which gives uh, the wind ability. Yep, Ultraman Tiga multi-type. Yeah, even though it should have been sky-type. Well, sky, but... it's blue. You, you kind of don't want to make two crystals blue. That's true. I, think that, I just think that would have made more sense. Well, they, they, they're thinking more of anniversary-wise. It's like Taro's 45th, Genghis 5th. Mm-hmm. Um, Tigo, let's get something. Twenty there. second anniversary. Yeah, it's been twenty two years since Tigo. Wow. Nineteen ninety six. Um, so then he transforms into wind. Yep, Ultraman and, Blue Wind. And it's pretty. Like I even like when he was transforming like into it. Like it was like a purple tornado and it looked really really cool. Like I like yeah. the effect. Enshired by wind, purple glay. Yeah, and or gale. Or purple gale. Yeah. Um, and then he, uh, yeah, and it's pretty, like, the purple looks really nice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nice, nice shiny purple. Uh, we saw in the vinyl figures for the winds is that it's a much lighter purple. Mm -hmm. But we did see the figure of Ultraman Blue Wind, mm -hmm. and it looks gorgeous. Um, and then we just get this amazing fucking just, like, camera work, where it's just, like, it's just blue, like... Like, the camera guy got, like, right up close to where, like, Blue and Bowser were like fighting. Like, close to first per Like, it's kind of like a first-person point of view. Yeah, like, it, it goes into first-person at some point. So, like, we get this, like, awesome shot of, like, him, like, kind but, of flying. And then you see, like, Rosso, like, flying ahead of him and stuff like that. And What I liked about that fight scene was how it didn't just straight cut to first-person. You see the camera pan into, like, the fight. So it's like, it goes from a third person point of view, it pans in front of Blue, and then it becomes a first person. Yeah, and like we see him using the slugger and stuff like that, it's just, it was, it was really well, like, interesting camera work, and I don't think it's ever, we've ever seen that before. Yeah, it was good video, videography? Uh, like cinematography. C yeah, it was yeah. good cinematography. Dur um, film G uh, again. And and then we get God, like, went to film and, then, and then we get a thing that we, like you kind of rarely see in Ultraman where it's like or at least in the TV series where they're fighting in the air. Yeah. Like they they're flying in the air and they're fight like this this honestly reminded me of the first episode of Ultraman Orb cuz like you know there were high winds it was a bird there was mega basser and like it was giant tornadoes and like the only thing we were missing was a car. Yeah. And like Yuha's like flying in the air cuz she's I guess taking advantage of like it being high wind so she can experience flying. Either that or she got stuck, or either that or she got stuck in the tornado. Well, your fault for wearing a wing suit. <laughs> so. Second, she's not fly. She's not flying. She's falling with style. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so then, like he, uh, Isami remembers like a thing that Yuha said to her before. Uh, said to him before, where it's, it's like, oh, you know, always look in the direction the wind's blowing, and like, you know, you'll go faster or something like that. And so, so he just. He goes in the opposite direction of the tornado to break it up. Makes a reverse tornado. And it was really cool. Like, you just see him... He's one like a Superman, like, just spinning it, around the Earth. It is a bit odd that the space archaeologist wouldn't know how to stop a tornado on his own. It was a space archaeologist, not a... Weather... Weather... Logist, whatever the fuck it's called. Radi... Radiologist? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. We don't know. Here, we at Ultra Ranger don't know actual professions. No, we only know how to make podcasts about... Uh, Those wind people. About tokusatsus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we made a joke before we started the episode where you was like, wow, you guys are wearing the same colors as Ult as Ultraman, like looking at Isami and Katsumi. It's like, yeah, we, we we're really love them. Big fans of them. Big fans of them. Yeah, we do a podcast about them. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, the Defeat Basser... And, like, I they, like it. They literally shoot him out of the air. Yeah, and then, like, they blow him up, and you just... And you actually, I like this, in the explosion, you see, like, feathers. Like, you actually saw, like, actual feathers in the explosion. So I thought that was a nice little addition to the to his death. In which, um, we also get the name for, uh, the, uh, wind. Wind forms final attack. It's called the Storm Shooter. And I liked it. It was a nice, like, simple, like, purple ray attack. Or, but... sorry, Storm Shooting. Yeah. And storm a shooting. Um. 
And then, like, we find out that Yuha, uh, oh no, we get this awesome shot of, like, Yuha flying, like, still flying in the air, and then just Blue goes up beside her, and, like, you can see, like, the, the scaling difference between them, and she's like, oh, nice to meet you! Well, she's not, like, she's not waving, because if she waved her hand, she yeah. would go... Well, she's just going, nice to meet you! Yeah, she would go do a complete nosedive. Yeah. <laughs> but apparently this is a reference to Ultraman Tiga. Oh, I don't know how, since I've never seen Ultraman Tiga, but I'll take the other Ultra fans' word on it for, because they've probably seen Ultraman Tiga. We all need to see Ultraman Tiga. Um. And then the episode just ends kind of oddly, with Eisen putting on Guy's jacket, and you hear rip noises. He he, he ripped the jacket. <laughs> Quote unquote, rip the jacket. You Is don't it, really see any tears in the yeah, jacket. Yeah, well, Eisen's a very tall, slanky man. Oh, did you see the sleeves up, like on his arms? It was like, yeah, cut. It was like right where his wrist is, and then it's probably like two or three inches down. Yeah, he has lanky arms. Yeah, he does. Well, it wasn't it didn't fit him. <laughs> he was like forcing him on, and then he like gets the bass. Like uh, I guess Darling picked up the bastard crystal and like brought it back to him, and he puts it in his big case because I feel like he's compensating for something. Because <laughs> like they have like their little mini cases and then You know what they say about men with big feet? Men with big cases. And then just Big socks. And then he just does this thing that just blew both our minds. I find it hilarious how we both whistled. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he just whistles the Ornica theme. And we're just like... This guy knows something. How do you know that song? Where did you learn that from? Alright. Is he have guy locked away in a basement or something? Alright, I have three theories. Okay. Theory, theory number one. He's an alien. Mm-hmm. Well, Dottie's an alien. Yeah. Theater number two. Theater. Theory number two. Theater two. <laughs> Sorry. Don't bring work home, guy. <laughs> Don't bring work home. Do work at home. But uh, theory number two, he cannot age. So he's probably been around for that for that amount of time. He's part of guy's race. Yeah, he's part of guy's race. Or number three, he is Naomi's long lost brother. Yeah, we just love it. It's just like, it's like, oh, so you know, you know, Ultra, you know, Ultraman Orb, huh? Or like, guy, you mean my brother-in-law? Yeah. Actually, that would be something cool to see. It's Naomi's mom shows. No, 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 just characters from previous Ultraman seasons in this universe, like in like said show's universe, but it's not them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's them doing something else. Oh yeah, so it's like an alternate. So, so it's kind of like how I want in, like, in the main Power Rangers universe, have the RPM Rangers show up, but it's not actually them. Yeah. It's just them in this timeline, where yeah. Benji... They're more like Go-Anger. <laughs> They're all happy-go-lucky. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so this makes Aizen a really interesting villain now, because... We we now can establish that that confirm that he's like obsessed with Orb. Like he has like this huge like addiction and fascination with Orb. He has his crystal. He apparently transforms into Orb at some point. He has like a device that kind of resembles the Orb ring, and he has Guy's jacket. So obviously, this guy's had an interaction with Orb at some point. Or at least, like, Guy. At least Guy. Which, if Guy shows up in this show, that's gonna be fucking awesome. Because Guy did show up at the end of his show, Ultimate or or Chronicle, where in the final shot of that, up in his show, you see Katsumi and Isami walk right past them. Yeah. So, it could be confirmed that Guy is in this universe. So, who knows? This might be a... Aizen might be a guy that, like person that guy interacted with like before during his like travels and like you know his time is orb so we, we don't know hopefully more answers will be 
will finish, co- come to fruition. Finish that ten part plan, Super Aya. We want that. We want more. I feel like if we want Morb. <laughs> we want Morb. <laughs> Let's tell the episode. Yeah. We want Morb. <laughs> oh man. There we go. We want Morb. But I will say that's morbid. Morbid. Um, but I will say, like, Aizen is turning out to be an interesting villain. Uh, I, I, I'm really growing on, he's really growing on me. I cannot fucking wait for Orb Dark. Or, sorry, Orb Dark Noir Black Schwartz. Well, I'm actually shocked that you knew that, that you remembered that in the correct order. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know, Orb Dark's cool. I love his, I just love the simplicity of his design, and just, like, I can't wait. Like, I... I want to get the vinyl figure. I want to get that orb. Neo. Uh, orb ring Neo. Yeah, orb ring Neo. And honestly, I might pick up the figure for him. I, I like orb dark. It's fucking awesome. All right, the figure. Yeah, but that's a time machine nations. I don't give a shit. I don't get that. Uh, I still need to get the G figure art. I, yeah. I need to I still need to grab the Juggles Jupiter SH figure arts. I need to. Uh, but yeah, no, this was a cool episode. And like... Again, I love that we're, like, learning more about our villain, so, like, I, I cannot wait for her when Orb Dark fucking shows up. I really like how, uh, I kind of like the side character of the episode, Yuha. Yeah, I liked her a lot, too. She was really great. Like, we didn't really talk about her that, uh, that much in this discussion, but she does have her own backstory. Yeah, and, uh, we do find out that she's now went overseas to study, but she because does plan on coming back. Yeah, because apparently her parents are stupid rich and don't like her how or they don't like how she's at a middle class school. Yeah, they want her to do something big and better. Uh, they want her to go overseas, go to a prestigious, pre- prestigious, uh, high like, like a high, high class school. High class school. Yeah. Not high school, but high class school. <laughs> and they already signed her up for an arranged marriage. Oh, I didn't think Japan did shit like that. That's what Isami said as well. He's like, people still do that? I mean, that's kind of like a thing in India that they do. But, huh, interesting. So, but yeah, no, she was a really cool side character. I mean, kind of, hope we see her again. Hope we see her in maybe, like, the later, like, near end of, of Rube. Maybe she'll come back for the holidays. That'd be nice. Yeah, right around Christmas time, she'll come up, like, she'll come back and be like, hey guys! Then we got a scene where, where uh, she and Isami are underneath the mistletoe or something. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's get into our new s- series. Oh, yeah. Let's get into our new series for Ultraman. God damn it. Let's get into our new series of Ultraman. Train. Oh boy. Lane, there, there's no there's no train in Ultraman X. There is no X. No, but apparently there is a car that has a jet attachment. Like at first I was like, oh okay, they're flying the jet, and it's like, no, 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 no. That they're in a car that has a jet attachment. Did you not see the little uh, uh, um plug-in? No, <laughs> no, I didn't. I thought they were just flying in an actual jet. But no, it's a it's a car that that attaches to a jet. They have two other cars that do that as oh, well. Oh, for fuck's sake, of course they do. <laughs> anyway, so yes, here we are starting the very first episode of Ultraman X. Or the 2015 Ultraman series. Yeah, or as Garlic's call it, uh, Digimon with Ultraman. It, it is Digimon with Ultraman. And... I gotta say, I'm fucking kind of excited for this now because I forgot that uh, my, my favorite kaiju, Gomera, is... Oh, yeah, sorry, that's what we also forgot to mention in next week's fucking room. Mega Gomera's in it! 
Oh, can I see? Yeah. No, fuck you! <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> so, yeah, because, like, I like, it's kind of me, like, I love Gomorrah, like, as, uh, as just like I like Slowpoke. Like, I don't just, like, I love Slowpoke and I love Gomorrah, but I like everything that's, like, attached to him. So, like, I love Slowpoke, I love Slowbro, I love Slow King, and I love Mega Slowbro. So it's like a Gomorrah, like any iteration of Gomorrah. Like, Gomorrah, Mecha Gomorrah, Cyber Gomorrah. So, I don't know if there's any other Gomorrahs. Maybe Pizza Gomorrah? Oh, uh, there's... Is this a Gomorrah made of pizza? There's a uh, Greymon. Greymon. Yeah, apparently Greymon was a inspiration from Gomorrah. I can see. It. Oh, and that's why. I, honestly, one of my favorite ultimates was Metal Greymon because he's fucking Giga Blaster. Giga Blaster. Um, but yeah, so what's awesome to know is that Gomorrah is kind of a plot device for for X, or at least at least the first episode he is. Uh, he does. He does kind of show up a bit later on. Cool. Like, it's just, like, ever since Ultraman Zero, like, the first movie we watched, just, like, I saw Gomorrah because, like, uh, Ray was using him, and I was just, like, I was, like, I just, like, I like the simplicity of, of this kaiju. It's just, like, it's just tail, horns, Yeah, and, 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 like, burning, oh, yeah, burning Gomorrah, that's the thing. Oh, right, the full-on red version. Yeah, Gomorrah. burning Gomorrah's fucking awesome, too. That's, that's why, I like, I like burning Godzilla as well. So, yes, our story begins in the year 2000, actually. Yeah, and there's these two marbles, and, you know, they kind of just show up in space, and... Marble madness looks kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but we get this awesome, like, thing where, like, kaijus are just, like, kind of just sprouting out all over the world and just, like, destroying shit. Like, ancient artifacts. Like, we, like a, show up in Paris, India, freaking, like, it, it's, it's awesome. You want to know the weirdest thing as well? Mm -hmm. I looked into this. Every kaiju and alien that showed up in that quick, uh, quick montage, mm -hmm. all from the original series. Oh. Well, except for one. One of them was from Ultra Q. Okay. But still, almost all of them were from the original Ultraman series. That's neat. And apparently, this Ultraman X is the hidden anniversary season. There are a ton of callbacks to other shows. Oh, uh, maybe maybe Super Rage Six Forty Nine is an important number. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're the, maybe we're the, <laughs> maybe they were leading up to the fiftieth anniversary. Yep. It is going to feel odd that once we're done Ultraman X, we won't have any other shows from the two thousand tens to watch. Boo. Well, time to get started. I guess we're getting to the nineties. Nineties and up. And when we're done that, we will need to watch have a month though for sure where we just talk about like, like you know like that reboot of Seven that you said that's apparently really bad. Oh, Ultra Seven X. Yeah, I kind of want to. Maybe we'll talk about that as a feature topic while we're talking about X. We'll just talk about any other Ultra Men's <laughs> thing that has just the word the letter X in it. Okay, so we're talking about Ultra Men Max. That's an X in it. it. Does next March? That's what I want to do for twenty nineteen. All right. Uh, but yeah. So, yeah, these two, like, weird orb things are flying through space or something, and Which, then, like, one of them just, like, shoots the other into the sun. It's a callback to the very first episode of Ultraman, where Ultraman and Bemular, they were flying through space, and they were just giant balls. Oh! Oh, yeah! That, I remember that now. Okay. Ah, clever. So, in which, the Ultraman known as X, but he doesn't, apparently, he doesn't get the name Ultraman X until the very end of the episode. So, but yeah. for simplicity, it's just Ultraman X. Yeah. Ultraman X tosses the kaiju into the sun, which causes a aurora borealis around the Earth, mm -hmm. awakening the ancient artifacts known as spark dolls. Ancient artifacts. This confused me on so many levels. Because, you know, I thought... Because at the end of Ultraman Ginga, all the spark dolls left Earth and went back into space. It wasn't until later on in the show where they confirm X takes place in its own continuity. Oh, it does it? Yes. Interesting. So that's why there are still spark dolls around. And that's and that's why like they've never heard of Ultraman before. Yeah. Okay. I like I like those shows. I like the Ultraman where it's just like Ultraman's not a thing. So it's, it's like, like what is that? Oh, it's nothing we've never seen before. 
call him Ultraman. It, it's kind of like in Power Rangers, you know, when they don't care about continuity between seasons. Oh my god, it's the worst. But, uh, in order to deal with the attacks from kaijus and aliens, the World Nations commissions a special defense unit called Zio. Come in, Linda! Zio! Or in Japanese, it's Geo. Yeah, that's also how you kind of say it. Car, Zio, you say Geo. It's time. Yeah. But Zio, Anyways. like, Zio is an acronym for Xenon Invasion Out, out, cut, out Cutters. Now, Gar, what was the thing you noticed about this show that apparently it has that kind of almost did with Ginga S, but a bit more? So, you know how I mentioned in Ultraman Ginga S, a ton of the characters didn't really do a whole lot? Mm-hmm. At least there were roughly, like, what, five characters uh-huh. all together? Yeah. Since the show is called Ultraman X, they decide, fuck it, we're going to add ten Characters to the team. Ten side characters. Well, nine side characters, including Daichi. One of them, one of them played by fucking Taiga, aka Kamen Rider Snipe. <laughs> yep, the actor who plays Kamen Rider Snipe and is then, in this. And uh, then Doctor Maki's their captain. For, uh, if you don't know Doctor Maki from O's, Tachibana from Amazon's, which is weird because there was a shot I saw where he's standing there, and then there's a woman whose character name his is his code deputy. Yeah, his code captain. His name is Tachibana, so I thought that was really fucking weird. And then, uh, yeah, and then we have Asuna, who's the uh, Kiriko of the series, because, let me see, this aired the same year as Drive. It did. It, it, it's, it's fucking Drive. So, our main character, Daichi. Daichi. Da- uh, Daichi Ozora. Mm-hmm. His backstory is the ones like Go Busters. Yeah, like legit. Full on go busters. Parents were scientists. Uh, his dad went to go save his uh, went to go get his mom in like an office building or something. House, uh, not the house. The building itself gets digitized somewhere, and then he is orphaned. All all that remains to him is his mom's headphones, and his dad's Gomera spark doll. Yep, which he like keeps pretty close to him. And, like, he talks well, I, to it. <laughs> well, I, I would, too, if that was the last thing I had of my parents. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like, it's like my blue bear that I really cherish, because my brother gave me that the day I was born. Mm-hmm. So, it was his blue bear, but it's my blue bear. Um, yeah, and so then, like, later on, like, Daichi, he's a part of Zio as well. And, he is um, a part of the lab division, yeah, like, the, sci- lab. the research division. Yeah, so he doesn't really have any combat experience. He kind of just does research. But then we get introduced to these two scientist characters, which already so much better than Tomia. So there is uh, Ryu T- Takada and, and Mamoru Mikazuki. And they're already better than Tomia. <laughs> like a thousand times better. So th- that's a. No. Honestly, that's like actually a thing I really like in movies. Like I love in. Like have you ever seen Get Smart with C. Perel? Yes. Like remember, remember the two scientist dudes? Like there was like Jonah Hill and the Asian guy? Like a, were, a, a bit. It's been a while since I've yeah. seen Get Smart. If you watch the movie again, like, you'll see Jonah Hill and, like, this Asian guy, and, like, they're the two, like, kind of, like, test people who make, like, the gadgets and stuff. That, that's what I like. If you're... In, in shows like this or movies, like, it's always good to have two scientists. Like, two... Like, in uh, Pacific Rim, freaking Charlie Day and the, the British guy. Like, yeah. they'll, they'll... Good team. Like, always put scientists in pairs, because... Have two scientists, because then they work off each other better. Vulcan Skull. Vulcan Skull. Like, yeah. Told me that he was just one dude. He was bland. He was boring. Like, I did not give a shit. Punk ass bitch. <laughs> yeah. Like, the only exception I could see in was in Drive with Rena. Like, in Drive, Rena, she was, like, literally two people in one per- in one body. And she was an amazing character as a scientist. So, So yes. Our main character has the origins of a Go-Buster. Mm-hmm. His Ultraman partner, Ultraman X... Is just uh, his name is escaping me. The belt in Comrade Drive. Oh, uh, Grim Steinbelt. No, Grim Cr- Steinbelt. Yeah, Grim Steinbelt. And he has the gimmick ability of Comrade Guy, where he arms changes. Yeah. Um, but we see that they're researching to summon Cyber Gomera, so they actually have the card, and Cyber Gomera is fucking 
awesome looking. Well, like, then holy sh- shit! They didn't show them off all the way well, in this episode. We saw maybe sixty-seven percent of them. Sixty-five. Yeah, sixty-five percent of them. But like, I've seen a full-on picture of him and stuff, and he looks fucking awesome. So more or less, the research division's goal is to try and create their own cyber kaiju's to fight against, you know, other kaiju's. Which. That's cool. That's a smart idea, because, like, in a world, in a universe where Ultraman's not really an established thing... Maybe that's, humans have to defend themselves? That's a good idea. So that's that's really cool. So, like, they try... He try Daichi tries something, and, like, so he, like, he has the, um... X to... So, so the device is called the Zeo Divisor, mm-hmm. but when X takes part of it, it's now called the X Diver. Oh, or, X the, Divisor. Yeah, X Divisor. Okay. Which, yeah. I find odd because it's already in the Ultraman colors, red and silver, mm-hmm. but then the Ultraman X changes it to yellow. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, don't make it the maybe, colors of your franchise. Maybe that was just the Easter egg. It's it's Easter egg. Um, yeah, and so, like, and, like, it has, like, a computer AI, like, a female voice, computer voice, and, like, I actually like it. It's like, it's a consciousness, and, like, Cyber Gomera. <laughs> Cyber Gomera. And apparently, like, the toy has a shit ton of stuff in it. Like, so much. Like, apparently too much. It has so much fucking, like, voice... voice well, work in imagine it. Imagine taking every single kaiju in the Spark Doll line and doing audio clips for it. So, that's impressive. Like, I think I remember when I watched Kazo's video on it, it was like a 25-minute video of just, like, doing all the different shit with it. That's crazy. I, I would like to get one of these because I actually like this device. It's pretty cool, but it's like, fucking hundred dollars because it comes with like three cyber cards the device itself and then the the, the vinyl the, for the next spark doll yeah um so yeah so they tried something got cyber gomera it's something it like glitches and it doesn't it doesn't they're only able to summon like 65 percent of it and then it was sad because like you see it like kind of collapse while like disappears i'm like no it turns into like cubes and just falls apart yeah and then, like, at one point, like, Gomorrah starts, like, shaking, and, like, it's, like, reacting, and, like, Daichi's like, Gomorrah, what is it? And he, like, like uh, scans it on the divisor to, uh, like, get some information. See? Yeah. At which then he keeps hearing a uh, voice saying, Unite! 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 Uh, which, that leads us to the start of a new kaiju. Not just in the show, but in the franchise. Ooh! Yes. I, I always like original ones. Yeah, it's apparently. Like, it's like Gregory. <laughs> apparently, the director demanded for a new kaiju for the season premiere. Good on him. Yeah, because. Super the, like, huh? like, I don't know, I can just see it being like, wait, you want us to use a kaiju that everyone already knows? Yeah. Guys, let's just do a new kaiju. Do we have the money for it? I think so. Let's check. Let, let, let me check the bank. Whoa. Yeah, we got the money. Yeah, no, you can tell Subaraya got a fucking lot of money. You know what? You know what's probably why? It's probably because of the movie. Because the movie was really good. And, like, the budget the budget for the Ginga S movie was pretty fucking impressive. Like, holy shit. That, you, have to, you have to remember, Ginga, Ginga S, and X didn't air by themselves. No. It, yeah. They were a part of the Ultraman anthology series. Mm-hmm. So while those shows were... When Ginga, Ginga, S, and X go on hiatus, mm-hmm. there are clip shows going on throughout the rest of the year. Yeah. So in which they're still promoting old content. Mm-hmm. But it's still new to some people. Mm-hmm. But still, like, in, like, in the first episode of X alone, like, the yeah. budget shows... Especially, like, when uh, we got, like, so what's, what's the new kaiju's name? So, the new kaiju's name is called the Molten Iron Monster Demega. Demaga, yeah. Uh, Demaga. And he looked awesome. He reminded me so much of Godzilla. Yeah, especially with his fucking, like, atomic breath that he had. Like, he had, like, he shot, like, this kind of, like, well, because it was, um, well, actually, you know what? It looked like he was firing? What? Like, like, the, like, solar flares. Because you came from the sun, right? You want to know what the attack is actually called? Hmm? Fireball Eruption. Yeah, and he was from he came from the sun, right? Because he got tossed into the sun. So that, that makes wasn't sense. Him. Oh, that wasn't him. No. Oh. I at least tell you this: what X tossed into the sun 
more powerful. Oh, fuck. It Frank. took X everything to toss Even him into the body. Sea. Yeah, X loses his body. Yeah. Um, but no, for, for an old new kaiju, this one's cool. Like, it, it, I like this one. Like, it feels... Remin- like, it feels uh, not similar. Like, um... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Nostalgic? Yeah, in yeah. a way. Like, if it looks... It feels like it's an old... Like, it's already a kaiju we've seen before, but then it's not. And, like, the destruction it does is cool. Like, the shots... Like, we get this awesome shot of, like... Like, it's just, like... It's kind of like a camera guy, like, looking, like, up at Damaga. Yeah, it's, and it's just, like... Doo, doo, like, and he's, stomping like, he's, like, he's stomping through the city. Destroying buildings. People are running and looking at it and stuff and screaming and stuff. And it's just, like, wow. Run! It's Godzilla! No, due to technical copyright, international copyright laws, it isn't. So we should run like it is Godzilla! No, it isn't. Ah! I'll never stop making that joke. <laughs> That should be a thumbnail one time, just those two guys. You know what? I think it might be this week's thumbnail. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's it's... have them with Ru- Ru- Rosa and Blue's head. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're still keeping to it. If we don't, if weeks we don't talk about Ru, we will have an original new thumbnail, but every time we talk about Ru, we have to have it. Mm-hmm. Two people, a pair of something, with their heads. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, so then, like, Daichi goes with Asuna, who, um... Oh, well, no, who are the other two characters? So who, who's sniping the other guy? So the other guy is named, get this, Wataru. Yep. Uh, actually, if I can scroll down to find their names. Uh, I mean, okay, so it's Wataru Kazama mm-hmm. and Snipe, uh, Snipe's actor. Oh, Wataru Kazama. Oh, Kazama. Mm-hmm. And, the, and Snipe's actor's character is Hayato Kijima. Uh, okay, Hayato. Okay, Wataru and Hayato. I don't remember that. There's actually an episode where they get into a fight over a girl. Oh. Yeah. Huh? And we actually get to hear Slime sing. Cool. Yeah, I saw him smile in this episode and I was like, Taiga doesn't smile? That's weird. Wait, he doesn't have a streak of white hair? Oh. Not the same guy, not the same guy. Actually, it was later. Actually, it was later. Actually, like two, three years later. Two, three years later. Yeah. Good on him, though. Like, hey, that's he, a good he upgrade. Got to show, he got to show up as a side character in Ultraman and then became a common Rider. Like, if you see him in the Sentai, then he's went, he's come... <laughs> well, no. He has to be now Sentai, and Sentai, and then Metal Hero. Mega Metal Hero. that Metal Hero. They are with the Space Squad series. Which is, I think that's what they're kind of trying to do. They're trying to, like, get people hyped for Metal Hero stuff again, and then they'll be able to release an all-new Metal Hero show. I, I at least do like how they're releasing Metal Heroes on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Except for that North American release of Just Beyond. That makes zero sense. Why not just release it on DVD? There is no Blu-ray remaster of it. You watched the first episode, right? Yes. How was that? I'll talk about it later. Okay. Uh... Talk about uh, Garstoku vlogs. Yeah, we'll talk about Garstoku vlogs. <laughs> <laughs> or Garstoku vlogs. Oh. Um. Yeah. So yeah. So then. Uh, yeah. Then we get to the end. She ends up going with Asuna, and like I, I like her. Like she's kind of like she's like this really like tiny, tiny woman, but like she's like like really short and stuff, but she's very tough. Like she reminded me of Kiriko from Drive, which like it's funny. Like they're like Asuna, and she's like that's Officer, Officer Asuna. So. Officer Daichi, come in. Officer Daichi. Yo, Daichi. Get off your fucking ass. Um, and then, I, I like their suits they have. And then they have, like, body armor. Like, they like because you saw when, like, Daichi was doing, like, his research, you could see his body armor was, like, hung up mm-hmm. uh, behind him. It, it kind of reminds me of, uh, like, they all look like people, uh, they all look like members of a paintball team. <laughs> yeah. It does look like paintball armor. Um, yeah, and then they have, like, these biker helmets or whatever like that, and then, like, so they go into the city, and they're trying to, like, you know, find out what's going on, like, research more on the mon- on the kaiju, and which, like, they're like, okay, it's a, it's a based off, like, an ancient mythological beast from, like, ancient times. Apparently a warrior of light defeated it. Yeah, and then, like, they're, I was just like, who gives a fucking shit? Like, that's not gonna help us now, and then, um, so then, like, uh, Demaga's about to, like, kill Daichi, and, like, and then, uh... He gets saved by X. And, like, just right on the spot, transforms him into X. 
Too bad he's afraid of heights. Yeah, no, but you know what? That's fine. I always say in Toku, I like when like a guy gets his powers and he doesn't know what the fuck to do. And he's scared out of his like, mind. Like it clicks in for a moment, being like, wait. Yeah, it's like when for when it's like when Gintaro turned to Forza for the first time, he like kind of knew what he was doing, but he was very he was more so confused about what was going on. Guy and Koda was just like, what the fuck? But like, and then you know, Drive, he just accepted like. Oh, I can do more help if I transform to Kamen Rider? Cool. I'll do it. Where it's like in Ghost with, with his, uh, Damashi. Hey, go away, oh, go away, go away. I should have stopped believing in myself and just should have trained more. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Um, and then, yeah, so he's like afraid of heights. So you see him like, you see him like he's outside of X or whatever like that, like as X, and like you see X like just kind of like cowering against the building. He's like, like he's oh my god! Himself, it's like, He's like, he's like, you're not, you're not gonna fall, you are, like, tall. Oh. And then, like, he actually, like, looks, like, we see, like, a first person's perspective of, like, him in the Ultraman suit, and, like, he looks down, like, yeah. And, like, even, even, even Demog is like, the fuck you doing? Demog is like, rawr, Ultraman. Rawr, I'm a dinosaur. And so, like, yeah, and so, like, uh, looking at Ultraman X's design, he looks awesome. Oh. Like, it's a very, he's a very, like... Honestly, he looks more futuristic than Ginga does. That's sad. That is kind of sad. like I get it. Like he does look like Ginga does look like he's from the future because he has like all the glowy bits on him. Yeah. But like this one looks like it honestly looks like he was like a man-made Ultraman. Like yeah. like someone took like like it's like it's like Ultraman came to Earth and then like a human research group decided, hey, let's build some extra enhancements on you and just put like body armor on him. He does kind of look like a Megazord. Yeah, but he looks good, and I love love the X color timer. Like that's what that's what I love. His whole motif is about being an X, and like you can see when he does anything, it's involving an X. Like even when he does his like ray attack, he puts his arms up like an X, and then the, shoots out an X beam. The Xandium shoot them. Yeah, and, and honestly, that really wowed me. Like I thought that was a really impressive. Oh, how like he, how like he charged it up with his arms, and then he. And he, yeah, and just like the beam itself looked really good, and like how he launched it was awesome. Okay. So. Biggest thing that a lot of people talk about though about his design. What do you think of the headphone ears? I didn't even notice. Hang on, let me, let me look up a picture yeah. of this. For the thing about X is that his ears look like headphones. Okay, let's see. Ultraman X. fine with that. Like, this doesn't bother me. No. Like, yeah, like, I like his design. It looks fucking cool. It's incredible. Yeah. I can't wait for that figure part. I know, you're, and it comes with Cyber Gomorrah uh, armor. Like, that's, see, well done, Tomishi Nations. That's how you do a figure art right. Is, isn't he, like, the first Ultraman to have, like, actual, like, armor attachments? Like, I guess you could kind of say that with, with Victory, because he had, like, weapon attachments, but this one, like, he has, like, full-on armor and weapon attachments. I feel, I feel like it is a good progression from Victory. Yeah. Because, like, that was cool with Victory, but, like, this time, I think they took the concept of what Victory had, and then just, like, it was like, no, we can do more with this. And then they did. And... And I honestly feel like it was from, it was inspired from Kamen Rider Guy, because Guy's whole thing was about arm change, like, wep armor change. Mm-hmm. X is basically just arm changing. Yeah, so then, like, he, like, so X is, like, telling him to fight, which, by the way, the, the voice of Ultraman X is, uh, the same guy who did BJ Stag. <laughs> so, literally, BJ Stag is an Ultraman. Stagabuster! Stagabuster! What are the odds Stagbuster was silver? Oh. Um. He was destined to play Ultraman. So, like, he told us Daichi needs to fight, but, like, Daichi's like, fight? I, I don't do that, I'm a researcher! And, like, if you're a researcher, why are you wearing, like, the... Combatant outfit. Sa sa safety procedures. Oh, yeah, I guess when he has to go scouting on the field or whatever like that, he has to, like, be protected. Yeah. I mean, okay, that makes sense. I'll, I'll accept that. Then I, I feel like every every officer has one. Oh, yeah, maybe the two scientists were... Oh, too. they probably have padding. Yeah, they just probably have lab coats. They just, I think they were wearing it over their lab coats. Yeah. I like those two already, <laughs> though. Like, they're, they, they have good chemistry. I like them. See, again, they're going to do scientists doom in Paris. Oh, oh, you should see their teacher. Or their mentor. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Um, so then, yeah, X just, like... Well, I wouldn't say teacher, more like boss. 
Um, so then, uh, yeah, Walter and Hayato, they're in the, they're in their fucking car jet thing, which, like, it's stupid but cool at the same time. It's, a, it's a halfway between stupid and cool. So, um, like, so they're asking, uh... Okay, so the, na the name of it is called the Sky Muschetti. Sounds like spaghetti. Right? <sighs> Sounds like spaghetti. Spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. Spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti. Um. So then they ask. Uh, they ask the captain. It's like, oh, sh can we? Like, should we help him? Like, it looks doesn't look like he's gonna like attack us or anything. And then he just says, "Yeah, no, go help him out." Wait, really? Yes. Yeah. So they distract the manga enough to. You know, let him X get up, and then he starts, like, biting him and beating the crap out of him. Mm -hmm. And it was cool. And then, yeah, he finishes him off with his X-ray, and... Zandium shit. <laughs> X-ray. Mr. Busto. Mr. Busto. I miss him so much. have him come back sometime. Or just have another one of his race, like an alien chibble, just come back. It's the same VA. <laughs> Well, oh. oh my god, yeah. You know what that's to do? If you do, if you get episode like dubbed episodes of Ultimate Gig S, just get the voice of Patrick <laughs> into the voice. Oh Monsieur Mr. Bolsto <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll be obsessed with that. Just wait, uh Ultraman X flies off and Captain Shotaro. Yes, his name is Shotaro. Shotaro. He's like Oh, where's the Ultraman? It vanished, sir. A what? He's not on our system. We've never seen a classification of his kind. We should give him a name. No, he's an X. He's Ultraman X. Yeah, like he says that, and I'm just like, where did you get the Ultraman from? Like, in reference to... to the first series? Yeah, to yeah. the because, you know, Hayata shows up, and they're all like, oh, what happened? Oh, the giant saved me. Oh, what's his name? He doesn't have a name. What are you talking about? Everyone has a name. Ultraman. Ultraman. His name's Ultraman. And that sounds like a fucking franchise. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, and I would listen to the opening. The opening's not bad. Yeah, the, I would say it's on par with Ginga's, like, Ginga's actual opening, not what Crunchyroll has for an opening. Da, 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 That's his battle theme. Da, da, da. Yeah, I've only heard, like, the actual opening, like, once or twice. Yeah, uh... It's on par with Legend of the Galaxy, but I feel like Ginga S's opening, uh, Song of a Hero, is ten times better. But yeah, it's it's okay. It, the ending, though, with Ultraman X, uh, you, to unite, uh, yeah, to unite with you, uh, yeah, it's just to unite with you. It, it's, like, it's alright, but you know what I will say, though? Listen to the movie version of that ending. It's more rock theme, or like there's more, like there's more going on with it. Mm -hmm. It's more upbeat. It's like, yeah, we're gonna take this guy down. Fuck too good. And the oh yeah, there is the uh, Daichi's. Th this is the series that started off the whole analyzation. Yep, where you get like, oh, here's the monster of the week. Yep. So in which it's Daichi's Monster Lab. That sounds like a toy that you find at the drugstore. It's cute, though. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can I get uh, Daisy's Monster Lab? And what's like episode you... one, please. <laughs> of course, they talk about uh, the Mega and the Cyber Card for the episode Ultimate X. Now, okay, that's the thing that bugs me. So, like, okay, I get it. We just got off a of game, guys. Still kind of want to do the Spark Doll thing, but like, you have a card of Ultraman X. I think like. It's cooler to insert a cyber card into the uh, X divisor instead of like just putting a spark doll on. It's kind of it's kind of dumb. Oh, well, I, I kind of like that. Like I like the card thing. Mm -hmm. I see where you're coming from. Yeah. But Subaru doesn't just want to, like. I feel like the company itself, Subaru Productions, they didn't want to lose that yet. They still wanted to keep the spark doll. Like, train going. That's probably why. So, like, that's why I'm, like, not gonna hate them super much for it, but just, like, me personally, I just think 
the card thing like, a bit like better. It's still selling. Let's keep Yeah, let's just keep the spark dolls going. Like let's let's let people have a full set of like spark dolls. Yeah, and then after Ultraman X they did change the spark dolls to be regular vinyls. Yeah. Um, and who knows, this is probably where the fusion card concept came from. Oh, for sure. Like with cyber cards. Um, but yeah, so that was the first episode of Ultraman X, and honestly, looks great. Like, I'm so far enjoying myself, so it looks like it's going to be really good. Um, and so, in celebration of Ultraman X, because uh, Gomera is the primary focus. Man, I, I just, swear. I, I just bought a Gomera. Cheap, like you said. I know. Hey, next week I'm probably gonna buy Cyber Gomera. <laughs> then I'll have all the Gomeras. Are you sure you don't want to get what next kaiju? Uh, the next kaiju to show for the Oh next? god! So next week's episode of Ultraman X, apparently fucking Birdon comes back. My favorite kaiju. Fuck Birdon. Birdon's fucking stupid. Fucking testicles dangling from his face. Beware the pecker. And his pecker. His pecker. <laughs> yeah, apparently a lot of people loved the, our thumbnail for that. Oh, it was... It's Cause like, I told you, I wanted you to do a pixelated censorship, but like, I didn't say that specifically, so you just put like, the censor bar, but apparently uh, Northcaster liked that. He thought mm -hmm. that was funny. So. So yes, this was Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger, episode 51, We Want Morb. Uh, oh yeah, and our thumbnail is gonna be, it was originally gonna be, like, just Rube and Rosso and Blue, and then we just have, like, uh, Yuha's Icarus flying in the background, but then with Navi's head from Gojo, and then we just, like, we were watching Robot Chicken stuff, and we just found this one image of just Grover and Oscar the Grouch, and just, like, it's a meme. yeah, it's a, like, it's a meme, but we're gonna use a thumbnail for this, so. You know what, we'll use it for the. For the YouTube thumbnail. Okay, yeah, we'll use it for the YouTube thumbnail. We'll use it for the YouTube thumbnail. Yeah, but for the actual thumbnail, for the Podbean thumbnail, we'll use, um... It's the two guys from Austin Powers' old member. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, let's go to ya. So, yes, uh... Well, I guess schwa for now? Yeah, schwa for now. You don't have to do that shit anymore. Hey everyone, thank you for listening to this episode of Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger. We appreciate your dedication to listening. If you have an opinion on the news or shows we talked about, leave a comment down below. Hashtag comments for Lane. If you want to check us out on other social media pages, you can check out our Twitter pages. As always, you can follow me at twitter.com slash You can follow me at twitter.com slash lane double underscore. For other pages, you can find my blog, Gar's Toku Blogs, on facebook.com. And while you're on Facebook, why not give Radio Sentai Cast Ranger a follow? For older episodes of our shows, you can find them at castranger.podbean.com. And we also have some merch, such as t-shirts and bags, available at tpublic.com. That's all for this exciting episode of Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger. Until next time, schwa for now! now.